Hi, Dr. Raj here at the University of Southern California, just about to start my resident morning report talking about chest x-ray interpretations. How can we look at a chest x-ray, interpret it in less than five minutes to get the correct diagnosis for the board exams and for the clinical wards? The most important part of medicine is always gonna be the anatomy. We should realize that there's gonna be two lungs, three lobes on the right, two lobes in the left, and what does the left lobe not have? The middle lobe. Instead, we have something called the lingula. It's also very important to point out that there is something called the fissure. No one likes talking about the fissure. On the right lobe, we have our horizontal fissure, also known as the minor fissure that separates the right upper lobe from the right middle lobe. And then both on the right and the left, we have our oblique fissure, also known as the major fissure. The main thing is to take this basic anatomy and apply it to a chest x-ray image. It's important to follow down the airways, follow that trachea down to the crina, going to your right and left main stem, taking a look at the heart itself, identifying the different parts of the heart. Are we referring to the right atrium? Are we referring to the left atrium or the left ventricle? It's important to see that you could define the ribs to see the diaphragm. So take your basic anatomy and apply it to a chest x-ray to get used to the images that you see. Don't forget, there's something called the lateral view of the chest x-ray. So when we talk about the lateral view, it helps you define a two-dimensional view of where is the pathology. The lateral view, as you can see, is divided into the anterior, middle, and posterior mediastinum. In the anterior, we think about things such as masses that could be thymomas, masses that could be lymphoma. In the middle mediastinum, we think of cysts. What types? Pericardial cysts, bronchogenic cysts, esophageal duplication cysts. Then we go to the posterior mediastinum, and I think about neurogenic tumors. Now, one that jumps to my mind, and for your board exams, will be the schwannoma. This slide is going to give you some basic tips that everyone needs to understand before going into the details of a chest x-ray. Number one, identify the patient. Is it the right person that we're talking about? Number two, rotation. It's very important to realize that before interpreting a chest x-ray, what was the technique? Was the patient rotated to the right or to the left? Was the patient rotated up or down? It really will change the way you interpret a chest x-ray based upon these findings. Technique means that, is the chest x-ray over-penetrated? What does that mean? Is it gonna be too dark? Is it under-penetrated? Is the chest x-ray very light or has that white appearance to it? Is it a good inhalation film? Meaning that, can you see around 10 ribs? I know we spoke about this already, the type of film. Is it a PA, which stands for posterior anterior, which is the chest x-ray we want to have if the patient's able to go down the radiology? It lets us make comments such as cardiomegaly. Or is it an AP film, which is a portable film that we use quite often in the medical ICU? Don't forget guys, always ask or look to see if there's a lateral view to help localize where the pathology is going to be. And the number one thing you always must remember when you look at a chest x-ray is, are there previous images available? This will help determine how long a lesion, a mass, a nodule has been there. So you always wanna look at previous images. Now we're going down to the meat of the talk, which are going to be the A, B, C, D, E's of chest x-ray interpretation. Let's start off with A. A stands for the airway. Number one, look at that trachea. Is it shifted? Trachea can shift if you have things such as atelectasis in the upper lobe, if you have a pneumothorax in the upper lobe, do you have a big pleural effusion pushing the trachea one way or another? So you always wanna look at the trachea and follow it down to the carina. Especially if a patient has an endotracheal tube, you wanna make sure that's around two to five centimeters above the carina. And since you're there, take a look to see if you can define the right and left main stem bronchus. Let's go to B, B is for bone. And a little pet peeve of mine is to make sure that the technician didn't put the marker on the bone itself where you can interpret it. There's a fracture of a shoulder. And speaking of fractures, look at that lateral chest x-ray, look for fractures in the spine, especially if a patient has osteoporosis or osteopenia. Let's jump over to C, C for cardiac and the mediastinal structures. When we talk about the heart, it's important to make a note 
if it's a PA film, if cardiomegaly is noted, is the heart greater than 50% of the cardiothoracic diameter? Also, instead of just saying diffuse cardiomegaly, look at the different parts of the heart. Is it the right atrial enlargement? Is it left atrial enlargement? Or what about the left ventricle? Try to be as specific as possible. Once again, C4, cardiac. Now we'll go to D. D stands for diaphragm. Look above it, look at it, look underneath it. Remember, the right diaphragm is always going to be more elevated than the left because we have a structure known as the liver underneath the right diaphragm. You want to know if the markings of the lungs can be seen through the diaphragm. And you also want to know that that stomach bubble, is it going to be on the left side? Why do I make a note of that? There are certain diseases such as emotocilia syndrome. Some of you guys may know that as catagenaire's disease, where you could have not only dextrocardia, where the heart is on the wrong side of the body, but you could have sinus invertus, where the internal organs could be on the opposite side. So make sure that stomach bubble is going to be on the left. We're going to end our talk with the letter E. E for everything else. Now it's finally time to talk about my favorite structure in the entire body, the lungs. So we're going to take it one step at a time, describe the right, then describe the left. What are things that you should note if the patient's in the medical ICU? Mention if there's any lines, such as a central line. Is the patient intubated? Is that endotracheal tube in that two to five centimeters above the carina. And then you want to describe things as nodules or markings. And the way I explain it to residents and students is that imagine yourself talking to your attending over the phone at 3 a.m. in the morning with a patient not doing well and you have to describe what you see so your attending can make clinical decisions. So where are the markings? Where are the nodules? Are they peripheral? Are they central? Are they upper lobe predominant or lower lobe predominant? Are the masses well defined and circumscribed or poorly defined? And on that note, when we talk about the word markings, purely based on the chest x-ray, it's really hard to say these are vascular, these are interstitial. But as a rule of thumb, remember that as you go more to the periphery, chances are these will be interstitial markings. As you're more central, chances are they're going to be these vascular type markings. Go through the steps and you'll be ready not only for the boards, but for the wards. If you have any further questions about chest x-rays, please go to my website or contact me here at USC.